Hello and welcome to the solutions video for IXL grade 12 skill G.12 compound interest word problems. All of which are going to use the standard compound interest formula which is provided here. So Ethan puts $1,000 into an account to use for school expenses. The account earns 13% interest compounded annually. How much will be in the account after four years? So if you use this formula, so let's break it down. So the amount is the principal times one plus the interest rate over the number of compound periods per year, exponent number of compound periods per year times the number of years. So Ethan has set aside $1,000. The interest rate is 0 0.13, and it's compounded annually. So that's one period per year and four years. So this simplifies to 1,000 times 1.13 exponent 4. Which is... $1,630 and 47 cents. So Bridget opened a savings account and deposited 600. The account earned earns 3% interest compounded quarterly. So the R is 0 0.03 and N is 4. She wants to buy a new bicycle in two years. So we have 600 times 1 plus 0 0.03 over 4, all to the exponent 8. That is 636.96. Annabelle opened a savings account and deposited 800 as principal. The account earns 5% interest, compounded quarterly. What's the balance after 8 years? So this is 800 times 1 plus 0 0.05 for the 5% interest divided by 4 because it's compounded quarterly and the exponent 4 times 8 is 32 years or 32 periods so that's $1,190.50 now Olivia earned some money doing odd jobs last summer and put in a savings account that earned 6% compounded monthly after 8 years there is 6,000 in the account how much did Olivia earn doing odd jobs? So this is a different setup. After eight years, we know there's 600. So we know the interest rate. We know it's compounded monthly. We're going to have to rearrange the formula, which now is not provided. So let's start with the formula again. A is P times 1 plus r over n exponent nt but this time we have to solve for the principal and if we do our substitution in the last possible step we can reuse this algebraic result in future questions the instant we substitute numbers into any algebra it is only valid for that question we have to do the whole thing over again if we see a similar question again so we know our final amount is 600. And we have 6% interest compounded monthly for eight years. So 0 0.06, 12 months a year, 12 times eight. plus 0 0.06 over 12 and our exponent 12 times 8 is 96 so she started with roughly $371.71 Bridget opened a savings account four years ago the account earns 5% interest compounded annually and the current balance is 400 so here's the advantage in this case, we can go straight to this version of the formula. So 
So in this case, the amount she has is 400. And that's 5% compounded annually. And it's been four years. So four times one is four. So this is $329.08. And one of these days I have to find one of the banks that show up in these word problems that don't charge any other service fees of any kind. Britta inherited some money from her grandfather and put it in a bank account that earned 6% interest compounded monthly. After seven years, she has 7,000 in the account. How much interest did she earn? Notice it's not asking for the principal this time. It's how much interest did she earn? So that's not the 7,000. That's not the P, the principal. The amount of interest earned is the amount we have in the end minus the principal. So she had 7,000. We do the first part as usual, 0 0.06 divided by 12. Exponent 12 times 7 is 84. So she started with $4,604.14. She ended with 7,000, so 7,000 minus the $4,604.14 gives us the interest she earned, which is $2,395.86. So Bernice opened a savings account and deposited 200 as principal. The account earns 4% compounded annually. How much interest will she earn after 10 years? So this is another amount minus principal question. So we're going to have 200 times 1.04, uh, I guess, to the 10. And we'll subtract 200 from that result. She'll earn $96.05. So Adam deposited $318 in a new account that earns 10% interest compounded monthly. How long will it take for the balance to grow to $509? So here we're actually asked for the time elapsed. That's going to be different algebra again. Again, we have our amount is principal times 1 plus r over n to the nt. So we'll divide both sides by the principal. And now to find time on its own, we could take the log of both sides. And if we use the common log with that base 10, or we might as well because we don't have any clean logs inside these. So there we go. So the total amount of time is the log of the amount over principal divided by n times the log of 1 plus r over n. Again, the advantage to doing all the algebra without numbers is that now we can substitute into this every time. So now it's 509 and it was 318. We know it's compounded monthly. So here we have there the log of 1 plus, and it's 10%, over 12. We don't know the number of months. So let's solve for nt instead, and that's just the ratio of the logs. So that's 509 over 318 divided by uh, the log of 1 plus 0 0.1 over 12. 
So that gives 56.68246. So there have been roughly 57 monthly interest calculations. At 12 months in a year, that is four years, nine months. So four and nine. Kang wants to start a business. Perhaps he wants to invade our dimension coming from Dimension X. Oh, what am I saying? That was Krang. Kang would be more about time travel. Anyway, Kang wants to start a business which he estimates will cost $9,674. If Kang puts $6,596 into a savings account which earns 6% interest compounded quarterly, how long will it be until he has enough money to start the inter or to start the business. And here we go, we can reuse our algebra. So because we did it algebraically earlier on the same assignment, we can jump to the number of interest periods is the log of the amount over the principal over the log of one plus the rate over n. So we have 9674 over 569 or 6596, sorry. Our interest rate is 6%. And I believe it was quarterly. Yes, compounded quarterly. So log 9674 over 5696 divided by log 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4. 25.7229125 or 26 quarters, sorry. And actually we are asked for years and months so we don't want to risk going we don't want to risk rounding yet. So, we know we have 25 quarters to begin with. So that is four years, or no, sorry, six years and three months. And that will be, in addition to those, the decimal portion, times 4. So this piece is about 2.89. So this is 6 years, 3 months, plus 2.89 months, or 6 years, 6 months after rounding. And they have six years, five months. Okay, so they had different rounding, even though we left our numbers as unrounded. So we're use the natural logs. So the logs themselves are not completely comparable. So, if we have, so we had their two logs. Okay, and they divided by four. We take our 25.7229120.5 and divide that by four right away then yes, we get the same 6.43. Except out here, instead of 2926, we get 28013, because we use the common log instead of the natural log. So that will be the, the difference in the way we round the months. All right, so Clive is saving up money to buy a car that costs 7830 
he puts 7047 into an account which earns 12% interest compounded monthly. How long will it take until he has enough money to buy the car? So again, 7830 divided by 7047. And then that's divided by the log of 1 plus 0 0.12 over 12. So this is coming out at 10.5886 different, uh, yeah, that's different interest periods, but it's compounded monthly. So that'll be zero years, 11 months. So we need to figure out how long Sadie's money was in the account. So again, we have log of 2368 divided by 659. Divide that by the log of 1.15 because it was annual interest. So we get nine years. And then the decimal part is 0 0.1518291. That we have to multiply by 12. And then it'll be two months. Now, Levi deposited $9,265 into a new savings account. After 10 years, this was the balance. Now we need to find the interest rate. All right, so this is different algebra. We have A equals P times 1 plus R over N times NT. We have to solve for R. So A over P is 1 plus R over N exponent NT. We take the NT root of both sides. And this will be the NT root of, oh, of uh, A over P. So then R over N is the N teeth root of A over P. We take that whole thing and subtract 1. So then our interest rate, if we're looking for the annual rate, that would be N times the n teeth root of a over p minus n. So now the interest is compounded quarterly and it's been 10 years. So with the full substitution, we've got four times and it's gonna be the 40th root of 39, 827 over 9265 minus 4. So we'll take the 40th root. So we'll multiply that by 4, and then subtract 4. I'm getting 0 0.1485210261. So roughly a 15% interest rate, or to the nearest tenth, it's 14.9. So Scarlett earns $1,050 from a summer job and put it in a savings account that earns 2.6% interest compounded monthly. When Scarlett started university, she had $1,132 in the account that she used to pay for tuition. How long was the money in the account? So we are back to solving, at least for NT, or the number of interest periods. So we're back to this equation the log A over P divided by log of 1 plus R over N. So the log of 1132 over 1050 divided by the log of 1 plus our uh, 
2.67% uh, interest rate, compounded monthly. That works out to 33.833. So that's 34 months, which is two years, and 10 months. Now, Liam and Geetha deposited $533 into a savings account, which earns interest compounded monthly. After 11 months, they had 604 in the account that they used to go on the trip. What was the interest rate on the account? So back to the interest rates means we are back to this equation. So it's 11 months or 11 months compounded monthly. So there have been 11 interest periods. So we need to take the 11th root of 604 divided by 533. That is the portion in brackets. You have to multiply that by 11. And then subtract 11. And we end up with 0 0.1257. So the nearest tenth of a percent, it is 12.6%. We've got 13.7, so let's see where our difference is. Right, I, yeah, I divided by 11 here when I should have divided by 12, so that's entirely on me. Okay, so Marshall wanted to buy a new guitar. He deposited 539 to a new savings account, earned interest compounded monthly. What's the interest rate on this account? So, he withdrew it after nine months. So we need the ninth root of the 586 over 539. Now this gets multiplied by the 12 months. And we subtract 12. So we have the 0 0.11199 or in this case, to the nearest tenth, 11.2%. So Malik wanted to buy a new motorcycle and put this into an account. So again, it's another interest rate and there's eight periods. So we take the eighth root of 2484 divided by 2224 We multiply that by the 12 months, subtract 12, and we end up with a 16.7% interest rate. All right. So now we are back to our period. So that's the log of 4974 divided by 4705 divided by the log of 1 plus. 0 0.052 divided by 4. So there have been 4.3045527 interest accruing periods. So that whole number 4, when it's quarterly, is one year. So the 0 0.30455, that decimal portion, we have to multiply it by 12, and it rounds to four months. We get one year and one month. So where did I go wrong here? Okay. So it's the same thing there using the natural log instead of the common log here. And it rounds just a little bit differently. So this is compounded monthly. We've had no issues with those. So log 8462 divided by 7880 Divide that by the log of 1 plus 0 0.1339 over 12. 
All right, there have been 6.42 periods. So he is going to have to wait zero years and six months is the nearest. It's actually like a 6.42, so it's going to be more like seven months. So let's see if the rounding on Desmos does a better job here. So for his birthday, Simon's parents gave him $4,179, which they put into a savings account that earns this interest quarterly. And when Simon started university, he withdrew the entire balance of $45,536 and used it to pay for tuition. So let's take a look at how this one would, would work out. So he's got, in one hand, the amount of money he's earning is forty-one seventy-nine times, and he's got four point eight six percent compounded quarterly. And this is to four T, so the number of years. We're going to have to dramatically change our y-axis before that's going to show up. So let's make that 6,000. Now we have a curve. Let's make it 16,000. Now we can see more of the curve. And it was 5,000 or 4,553. So there's 1.774, and oh, I said T here. I guess it's t interpreting T instead of X, but yes. So 1.774 years. So that's one year, and then the 0.774 years round to nine months. So Luan deposited. $5,879 into a new savings account that earns interest compounded monthly. After eight months, the balance on the account was 6,492. What was the interest rate on the account? Well, these are ones where we often have those rounding errors. So let's see if we can avoid those. We'll do it again this way. So we have 6,492. Here we're starting with five eight seven nine was it? Yeah, and it's compounded monthly. So that's divided by eight. We need to find the interest rate after eight months. So it's been calculated eight times. Here's the x we don't know, but it's going to be between 0 and 1. There we go, 0 0.1497, so this should be 15.0. David, a real estate agent, earns a big commission for selling a house. Now, if it how long will it take his money to double at 4.47%? Notice that this time they didn't give us the principal. So this time we just know the ratio of the amount to the principal. So all we know is that we're taking the log of 2 here. But again, we also know that Desmos uses different logs and rounds a little bit differently on these problems. So what we are looking for is a 4.4% interest compounded monthly. Oh, 4.47. And this time we want it to coincide with 2. So we need to have, let's map out 10 years, 
and we'll do y of negative 1 to, say, 5. That captures it. We could zoom a little bit better, but there we go. So 12 times x, for the number of calculations, where x is the number of years, so 15.536 years. So that's 15. And we take our 0.536 and multiply by 12 to find out if it rounds closer to 6 or 7, and it's 6. Now Daniel deposits some money into a new savings account that earns 4.7% interest compounded quarterly. How long will it take his money to double? Well, this is now instead of 4.47, it's 4.7. He's compounding quarterly. So his money doubles in 14.834 years. So 14 and the 0.834 times 12 is 10 months. And there we go, finally.